Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this case, we're going to be looking at how we can model this type of organic curved designs in Rhino using sub Ds. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great as always. So to get started with this model, I'm going to go into a front view and I'm going to use a polyline. As usual, I need to start off with a reference line. I'm going to activate grid snap in order to snap to the grid and I'm going to be typing in six. So six meters in height and we're going to have around 10 meters in length. Now that we have our references, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and click on standard. Here in standard, I'll be able to find the control point curve which is the standard tool in order to create curved designs here in Rhino. Unable grid snap at this point. And the first thing that I have to do is to create the front shape of our modeling. This shape is gonna be basically a U. So let me just draw this very quickly, like so. And we have the front shape of it. Now I'm going to select again the control point curve and I can select it with the space bar. So let's go ahead and draw the back shape of our modeling. And it is very important to keep a fluid design. Now we no longer need our reference curve, so we can go ahead and delete them. Now let's head out to a perspective view by double clicking on the names of the viewports. And for our next step, I'm going to be shifting this line backwards all the way over here. And by using the gumball, so make sure that it is turned on, I'm going to start moving the control points in order to grab a more dynamic shape. So as you can see, I have many control points here. And one tip that I can give you at this point is that the less control points we have, the easier the modeling process is going to be for us. Therefore, I'm going to be grabbing these two curves and I'm going to be typing in rebuild. So rebuild will help us add or remove control points without damaging the curvature that we just gave it. So I'm gonna leave both of these curves with five control points and in the degree level, make sure to have three. Because for example, if I go with one, we will end up with a polyline. So we don't want that, we want a smooth looking design. So let's go with a degree of three. Now click on OK. And if I pick one of the curves, you will be able to see that I have fewer control points. So again, I'm going to use the gumball in order to create a more dynamic design here. So pick this control point over here and I'm going to be shifting it backwards like so. Maybe this one can go all the way over here to this point. And the same thing with this other curve. So grab the control points and let's go ahead and create an interesting design. Again, make sure that you have a fluid concept going on in here in order to end up with a better result. All right, actually I can take this one back over here and in order for you to end up with a nice smooth surface, you will need to use the sub D tools. And specifically right now, I'm going to be using sub D loft. And this window is gonna pop up, but we're not going to be going through the settings just now. So just click on okay. And we end up with this funny looking shape, which is not what we're looking for. So just press control plus Z and let's go ahead and fix it. In order to fix it, we actually need more curves in between these two that we have created. So that the sub D loft tool basically will have more information and will better understand what we are trying to achieve. So as I've just mentioned, what we need to do is to create more curves in between these two lines. And the command to do that is tween curves. So let's go ahead and pick these two and type in tween curves and three will be fine. So you can just press enter or press the spacebar on your keyboard. For the next step, we actually need to reposition the control points so that it makes more sense. Because if I go ahead and lock this together again, we will end up with a much worse surface. So that's not what we want. Again, I can pick the curves and start moving the control points. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pick this control point and drag it all the way over here. And again, always make sure that you end up with a fluid design on each of these curves. For example, if we have one control point way over here, it's not gonna make much sense. We need to go with the same fluidity that each of the curves have right now. Okay, that's more than enough there. I'm gonna go with this one and drag this control point way over here, pick this one and drag it to the left side. The same thing for this one. Now this curve actually needs to be more like this one over here. So let's pick this control point and drag it a little bit upwards. And this one can go to the left side like this. And if I go to a top view, a top perspective, you can see that this line doesn't make much sense. I need to maintain that fluidity. 
So as you can see, basically what we're trying to do is to gradually make each curve look more like the next one. So at this point, we can try the loft sub D again, or sub D loft rather, and you can see that we are getting there. And it actually doesn't look that bad right now. Now what we need to do is to click on record history and again apply the loft command. And let's go through the settings that we have in here. The corners option is going to make our corners sharp like this. And let's see what creases does. It's going to try and follow as much as possible the shape of our curves. We also have the closed option, which will close our surface and that is not what we want. So let's uncheck the closed and also uncheck the creases because instead of creases, I'm going to go with adjust shape segments. This will give me more control over the shape of our surface because I can add divisions on the U and V directions like so. That's a bit too much. Let's go and reduce this a little bit so we can actually have four and two in here. The corners, I do want them sharp. So let's keep that on and click on OK. Now, because I had record history on, I'm going to be able to grab one of the curves here and start manipulating the shape like so. So let's go ahead and try and fix this part right here because it's overlapping. So what I'm going to do is just to grab this control point and drag it to the left side like so. Now let's go ahead and drag this point over here. And if you cannot see the curves, you can just type in cell CRV, which will select all the curves and deselect with control. Once you have the curve that you want to edit, type in points on to see the control points again. I'm going to bring this control point over here and I'm going to drag it in just a tiny little bit. Now let's go ahead and pick this second curve over here and bring this control point to the right because this change is a little bit too abrupt right now. We want a smooth looking shape. Okay, it's not looking bad. It's actually looking pretty good at this point. Let's check it out from this other side. And we need a little bit of editing in here. So I'm going to be grabbing the mid curve. And if you have the gumball in the way and you cannot really select any of the points because of it, you can press the escape key and you'll get rid of the gumball for a little while. I'm really trying to get rid of this bump that you can see in the mid section to maintain a bit of fluidity. Now let's go to this other side and fix this a little bit. So let's pick this control point and bring it out here. So I want this roof to extend a little bit more to this side. Whoops, let's do that again. I actually want to move this on the Y axis and this is looking pretty good at the moment. I'm going to grab this control point now and maybe drag it upwards a bit so that it's not too squashed like this. I actually want a more natural change there. And we are almost done there. Maybe try and fix this section a bit more. So let's grab this control point and drag it to the right side. That's a bit too much. Let's go back a little bit. Okay, let's go back to the top. So cell here V. Where is that curve is right here. So let's pick it. And we can bring this control point to the back a little bit because this roof is actually a bit too exaggerated. There we go. And now let's go ahead and pick this other one and bring it back a little bit like so. OK, go ahead and grab this point here and drag it to the right side. All right, that looks a bit more natural. And let's grab this one over here because as you can see, it's not as smooth. So let's go ahead and bring it to the top maybe. All right, no, it's not working this way. Let's grab this one instead. All right, great. I think we ended up with a very nice dynamic design in here. So what we need to do at this point is to give our surface some thickness. So let's go ahead and isolate our surface. And by going into the sub D tools tab, you will be able to find this offset sub D. Let's click on it and I'll be leaving a 0.2 meters in distance. So click on enter and there we go. But we need to get rid of the original sub D surface, which is this one right here. So grab it and delete it. And I also want to smooth out the edges and we can do that by using the bevel tool. So you can double click on the edges while pressing and holding the control plus shift keys. So I'm going to start with these two or actually I can also grab these two bottom ones. I wouldn't recommend to grab all of the edges at the same time 
and apply the bevel because that's probably going to give you an error. So doing it by sections is going to be a little bit better. I'm going to grab these two like so and this one too. Probably this one over here too. I'm going to show you what happens if we go for all of them. So go ahead and grab all of them for the moment and let's go with bevel. Okay, so we start to get this weird shapes in. Let's see how it looks on an arctic mode. And it looks decent, but you can see that we have some overlapping faces in here. So that's why I prefer going by sections. So let's go ahead and grab both of the edges again, apply bevel, but this time we can just use two on this number of segments and not overdo it. So just a tiny little bit of bevel there. Now I can go into the top and grab both of these edges and do the same thing. So something around this point and I can go ahead and grab now the bottom edges and this other side too, like so. And again, one last time, we can apply the bevel effect. All right, it's looking really, really nice. For our next step, what we need to do is to create some windows. And for it, I'm no longer going to be using sub Ds, but actually just the regular tools from Rhino. So let's go into a top view and I'm going to be creating these windows with a simple ellipse. So let's start this ellipse over here. And that was a bit too small. Let's go all the way over here and drag it like this. Jump into a perspective mode and extrude this curve. So we need to make sure that it is actually matching with the roof and the bottom snap like this. But I see that it's a bit too thin so we can actually cheat a little bit and use just the gumball to give a little bit more of width to our whole design. It still looks really, really good. So we can stay like that and extrude again this curve and match it with the width of our bottom slab like this. So let's drag it a little bit to the right side and this one to the back and there we go. Now we just need to split it or trim it. In this case, I'm going to be using the split command. So grab the surface, type in split and use the sub D that we just created. Now we just need to get rid of the bottom and top surfaces. Okay, nice. Awesome. It's looking very, very good. Oops, I missed one piece here. So let's get rid of that one too. And for the bottom window, we will be using the same process. We just need to scale this ellipse with our gumball like this and drag it up. And we don't want the windows to be flying around. So let's reduce the thickness of it and make sure that both of the sides are looking good. Maybe we can drag it a little bit out on the Y axis like this. Maybe a little bit more, something around this point. That was too much. Let's reduce this. And there we go. Again, select the surface, type in split and select our sub Ds. Just delete the parts that we no longer need. Remember to check this on all angles and we can probably have a car parked in here. That would be really nice for a rendering. As for the window frames, I can actually use the curves that already make up these surfaces. As you can see, we have vertical and horizontal lines or structure lines there that we can use as window frames. In order to extract them, we just need to use the extract wireframe command. Then we can go ahead and use the multi pipe, which is a tool from the sub Ds and 0.05 centimeters will be just fine. These work really, really good. The same thing can happen with this one. So extract wireframe and use the multi pipe. And there we go. Now we can check it out in the Arctic mode. And now that I see it, I think our window frames are a little bit too thick. So let's go back a few steps and do that again. Extract wireframe, multi pipe, and we can have 0.025 for this. There we go, a more subtle design. And the same thing with the bottom one. Extract wireframe, multi pipe, and 0.025 will be great. But now I'm just going to be adding a box in order to represent our ground. And there you have it. A beautiful design made out of sub Ds here in Rhino. And there you go. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please comment, like, and subscribe for future tutorials. See you next time.